New item. What do you think? Very nice. Not bad. Picked up from Trade Plaza the other day. It's a genuine quality. And the signature is from Uncle Dane. Magnificent. Nice. Ooh, very nice. I can't believe that Medic prefers Pyro's item over mine. Would you like a second opinion? Oh, now this is a rare piece. Impressive. Very nice. Let's see, Spy's item. Look at that subtle, odd level. The tasteful thickness of that great, normal quality. Oh my god. It's even been signed by Robin Walker. If you want to inform individuals about interesting information, there are only three ways to indulge them. A top 10 list, a tier list, or an iceberg. Now, we all know what an iceberg is nowadays. We've all watched Titanic. But this isn't your grandfather's TF2 iceberg. Because it's mine. And it's all about the rather unique and unusual items, no matter how unassuming or uninteresting, just how unfamiliar they are. Many have heard about painted cow manglers before, but have you heard about painted vitasaws? What about legacy paints? And impossible paints? Do those precious prizes pique your passion? Then keep your peepers peeled for the presentation. Fancy hats with fancy particles that cost a fortune. Statements of success that even my senile grandmother knows about. The caps that everyone crazes from crates. Everyone's seen an unusual hat, weapon, or taunt before, and everybody wants one as well. There are currently 192 hat unusual effects, 78 unusual taunt effects, and technically 5 weapon unusual effects. The priciest of particles is my personal favorite being Nebula, while the cheapest ones seem to be Flavorsome Sunset. A rather nice effect, but currently only available on free hats. Golden Gilded Guns granted to those who have completed an expert tour. There are several different Aussies for several different weapons, all ranging in price and rarity, with the cheapest ones being the Blute Sauger, which goes for around 7.5 keys, and the most expensive being the Eyelander, which goes for 75 keys. A weapon reskid, which can only be crafted via a haunted metal scrap, two refined, and a Scotsman skull cutter. Its design and such are supposed to be the same as the Headless Horseless Horseman's, and its function like the Eyelander, even though the skull cutter is used in this crafting recipe. The most lucrative of loot, the most awesome Australian. One must be gifted by God or Greed to get one, as they only have a 1 out of 60,000 chance of dropping after completing any advanced or expert tour. They come with a kill streak and in strange quality. If you're willing to overturn a mortgage payment, you can pay an average of 3,000 keys or $6,000 to get one of the 263 pans out there. Items received from a cross-promotional event with other games, Garnishing Green. Typically a pre-order bonus for games on Steam which originated with Rift, with a genuine volcano fragment and sun on a stick. There are a couple of rare and odd genuine items out there and on here. Added to the Skurn items in people's backpacks before the Man Economy update, in addition to certain crafted items that had their recipes changed to be cheaper, the vintage quality comes off as one of those gimmick qualities, added to appeal to the extremely low-end traders nowadays. But, in some exceptional cases, the high-end traders swoop in for some extremely expensive earnings. Basic killstreak simply announce the players on a killing spree at 5, 10, 15, 20, and then every 10 interval kills, while specialized killstreaks add a colorized sheen to the weapon, while professional killstreaks add a nice little eye effect as well, such as hypno beams or cerebral discharge. There's a bunch of colors and a bunch of effects, and all the bunch comes from completing any two city tours and missions. This refers to the free most commonly used and seen cosmetics by traders, including earbuds, Bill's hats, and Max's severed head. Buds were widely used as a bulk of keys back in the day, although the price has been significantly reduced. Bill's hat was similar, but it's less seen as a currency and more of a hallmark of a beginner trader, and the Max's severed head as a sign of an experienced one. Bill's hats typically sell for 3.55 keys, Buds go for 7 keys, 
and the Sonon Rabbit Scallop sells for 27. Awarded to players who weren't assholes and idly standing around waiting for your items back in September of 2009. Those that did use the external cheating software for free had their items all removed. Buying the game before it went free to play rewarded you with this tin top topper, a nice homage to the beta versions of TF2 from 2003. You can still get this hat today by either buying the orange block or upgrading to premium for one of those gifts. While any idiot can see the immediate value of unusual items, collectors are, as the name implies, for collectors. They aren't flashy or as noticeable as unusuals, but the prices of them are usually double. They're a rare sight due to their extreme crafting cost, requiring a chemistry set and 200 of the required item. Chemistry sets stopped dropping sometime in December of 2014, meaning there aren't going to be any new ones. The cheapest collectors is the Lolly Chop, licking up a cost of 33 keys for the cheapest one, while the most expensive collectors is undeniably the collector's Dead of Night, one of the few all-class cosmetics that can be collectors, which goes for 1,400 keys, give or take. For those who get the good grace of having their item added to the game, no matter how good or how absolutely horrendous, you're rewarded with a self-made version of it as well. Unusual effect makers get the self-made cap with their effect orbiting it, in addition to a self-made key for whichever crate it belongs to. If you somehow grace the good gods at Valve, you can be gifted with a community item as well. Both the self-made and community items have their own unique unusual effect, tied to them being the community sparkle. Some old self-made keys are tradable, oddly enough, resulting in some of the most expensive items in the game going for around 900 keys each for a single key. In a similar vein, the Valve quality is very violent and verbose with his vanity. Only given out to a handful of Valve employees, the Valve weapons can have ludicrous stats stacked onto them or just be plain old purple techs. They're also outfitted with a unique particle effect known as Flying Bits, which is like burning, save for the fact that there are some blood explosions going on. Speaking of blood explosions, here's Robin Walker currently tearing through a fucking game of Nucleus with his Valve rocket launcher. The Saxie is a small statue of Saxon Hale set in solid Australium. The Saxie comes in a strange quality and is handed out to the winners of each category in the quote-unquote annual Saxie Awards, which hasn't happened in about five years. It rather uniquely has text in its stats informing you what year and category the player won the award for. A total of 16 of these bug-infested hats still exist, each awarded to a user who has reported severe game-breaking bugs and glitches, such as gaining MVM boss weapons. The owner of the hat gets to choose what unique unusual effect has been applied to it as well. I'm going to be honest and go on a limb here and say I'm not quite sure Valve still gives these hats out anymore. They still reward bug fixers with hats, but not these ones. These dirty items have been duplicated, resulting in double the keys, burning team captains, or more. Duped items can occur in various ways such as glitches, steam support, and some bugs which involve some extremely convoluted methods. Most people typically view duped items to be worth less than their original counterparts, but some don't care at all. The most infamous duped items have to be the strange shovel thanks to Soundsmith and the burning team captain as mentioned prior. The Robo Sandwich was a unique promotional item for free A toys made specifically for the San Diego Comic Con for 2012. You would need to buy a replica model of the Sandwich from either them or in the rare events Valve sold them online in their Steam store. There are currently around 1,360 of them and they sell for 170 keys. <gasps> it's beautiful! I love Gold! Golden wrenches were a special limited edition wrench that could only be achieved through crafting. Only 100 of them ever officially existed in that manner, with a special 101 being a reward for the Child's Play Golden Charity, a charity event that raised funds for sick kids which saw the deletion of 14 golden wrenches, leading to only an official 87 left. 
The How War, or Hat of Undeniable Wealth and Respect, was a special promo item given out to people who gained all 20 achievements in the Great Steam Treasure Hunt. The specifics of which can be found in a separate video I made going all about the hat. There are currently 439 How Wars out there, and they sell for a measly 315 keys. These hats come in both vintage and unique quality, and are awarded for either being a guest on the Crits cast, raffles and competitions, or submitting art for one of their many YouTube video thumbnails or projects. There's apparently a finite amount of the hats, but who really knows how many are out there and how many are left. What I want to know is where the fuck's my Dargo? Come on! The Gatebot hats are these special little lights that some MVM robots wear. Keep a lookout for them because they try and lift the two gates on Manhattan. There was a brief bug back in 2013 that allowed people to make and break the crafting system, baking these bot hats and wearing them. The bug was fixed in November and all the Gatebot hats were destroyed, leaving in their wake a glitched circuit board. It's a cosmetic item that doesn't have any cosmetic changes. There are only 97 of these circuit boards and they sell for the ludicrous price of 350 keys. just happened? The top notch is a one-of-a-kind hat awarded to Notch. You know, the guy who made Minecraft? The same guy who made an update where big nose creatures trade riches for you and construct golems? You know, after the update where he added tall black creatures that get aggressive when you look at them, iron bars, and watermelon. Valve gave Notch the hat after he complained on Twitter about people not believing it was really him when he was playing TF2. Spells were an extremely unique tool that were only available to grab during Scream Fortress. They were originally released in 2012 and were a reoccurrence up until 2015 which saw the removal of actually getting them. You could still trade them around and apply them to items until they went ahead and removed that during the Tough Break update and wiped out all unused spell items as soon as the user opened up their backpacks. You can only view the effects of spells during either a Full Moon, a Turnoween, or during Scream Fortress. The spells could be applied to a variety of weapons and cosmetics, and each had its own specific cosmetic changes. The footprint spell had the cosmetic leave a fiery wake of up to 7 different colors. These are typically the most sought after and expensive spells. The paint spells had their applied cosmetics pulse of intensity based on one of the 5 colors chosen. Vocal spells simply changed the class's voice pitch to be extremely deep. There were 9 of these spells, one for each class, and they were widely regarded to be the cheapest spells to purchase. The weapon spells are undeniably the most noticeable and sought after ones however, applying to only certain weapon types though. The exorcism spell could be applied to any weapon and getting a kill with it would cause team colored ghosts to rise from their corpse. That's a pretty low tier spell. Squash Rockets and Sentry Quad Pumpkins changed the explosions of the level 3 Sentry and Rocket Launchers from their typical blast to a nice bright purple and could be applied to any wrench or rocket launcher. Similarly, the Gourd Grenade spell made any of Demo's grenade launchers have a bright orange hue on its explosion. The final spell could be applied to any flamethrower and was known as Spectral Flames. Undeniably the most noticeable change out of all the spells as it changed the bright searing orange flames of the flamethrower to a bright green one instead like goo burning magnesium. Placed on the flog, it produces quite the pretty particle that is sought out by many. When killstreak kits came into contact with the tough break update, they could be placed onto anything you wanted. Crates, keys, kittens go crazy. Of course, the cost of these kits was a couple of keys, but nowadays people aren't keen on letting them go. Which is a tough break for everyone else in a bizarre twist of irony. These impossible killstreak items would sell for a fortune as people feverishly fought over them and don't even get me started on the price of an actual blank kit itself. One is currently on the Steam Marketplace for like a kajillion dollars. Or $1,800. Being the fortunate fucker that I am, I have my own specialized killstreak fireproof secret diary, which ties into our next little featurette. The fireproof secret diary was a rare drop during the lead up to the Pyromania update, partially involved with an ARG that revealed both said update and man vs machine. It functions identically to a normal spellbook, save for the fact it has some Pyroland-esque particle effects when equipping it and using a spell. There are only 627 of these Scorched spellbooks, and they sell for around 140 keys. The Painted Cow Mangler is like one of those fun facts you memorize to try and appear knowledgeable about something to impress people so you haven't wasted your life sitting at a desk making videos about a hat-themed dress-up war game. But 
Everyone knows about them. People all know that there are roughly 7 to 13 painted cow manglers in existence, appearing in team colored paints like Team Spirit or Balclavas or Forever, and that the paint affected not just the model's coloration, but also the part of coloration for a short period of time. We also know that a small bug allowed the cow mangler to be paintable for only a brief 5 minutes, creating an extremely tight monopoly on the few that exist with their prices possibly skyrocketing to nearly over a thousand fucking keys. How can something exist when the title says it doesn't? Non-existent paints as I've called them are simply painted cosmetics that use paints that aren't actually within the game. You'll see these are extremely popular on community badges as instead of making a new one, it's easier to just give them a new paint job. For example, this old Canteen Crasher badge I got here is painted, but doesn't use any of the recognized and well-known paints in the game such as Australian Gold, Team Spirit or such, it has its own full unique color hex paint. Speaking of things that don't exist, but do exist, the Dota 2 hats were awarded to the participants of the 2011 Defense of the Ancients 2 Electric Boogaloo Tournament, consisting of Sniper's Sniping Glass, Storm Spirit's Jolly Hat, and one of my personal favorite looking cosmetics, Clockwork's Helm. Now, despite the fact that these dope looking Dota hats do exist within the drives of the game, I dare not say a single damn Dota 2 player has ever donned the idea to actually play TF2, meaning not a single one of these hats has ever been claimed and they exist in a total of zero backpacks. The Memory Maker, despite its name, doesn't seem to make many memories. It's nearly identical to the much more recognized Saxi, being awarded in the strange quality to the finalists of each category for each year rather than the winner. Despite the fact that there are obviously more memory makers than Saxies, the fame and screen time the Saxies receive seem to make them shine more and be known by more. There are a bunch of these out there. Some are given out due to charities and the Make-A-Wish Foundation, while others have seemingly replaced the finder's fee, being rewards for reporting and solving game-breaking bugs. Some examples are the unusual golden frying pan, the Sunbeam's ghastly or gibbous, and there's two unusual Max's severed heads. These free hats have the unique gimmick of only being in someone's inventory for 24 hours, being awarded to them if they give out the most secret Saxons for the Gifting Man from Gifting Land, have the most dual wins for the Dueler, and purchase the most amount of map stance for the Filateer. The extremely bright outlines of these hats makes them instantly recognizable from afar, so you can gloat your accomplishment. War paints, and unusual war paints, were an addition added during the gunmetal update. Originally, there were four war paint effects hot, isotope, cool, and energy orb. Energy orb was undeniably the best looking effect as it worked wonders for any weapon with a large stock, like the medigun, minigun, or the sniper rifle. Unfortunately, the effect worked as well as the McDonald's ice cream machine for melee. And as a result, the effect was retired, being impossible to uncreate anymore and being the only effect to ever be retired. During the Soldier vs. Demo War update of 2009, Valve asked the community to create propaganda posters promoting their pal. The top three entries were each awarded their own hat, known as Uncle Sam for the third place winner John Freeman, Amber's Rad as Hell hat for the second was given to Drake Lake, and J Axer's Dapper Topper was given to the man of the same name for first. Several bugs and glitches have increased the cap of the letter count when using name and description tags. It's typically 40, but there are some that have it doubled to 80, and even tripled to 120. They're pretty hard to notice in game, but still attract the odd collector here and there. Technically, this could apply to the painted cow manglers as well, referring to any painted items that shouldn't be paintable, such as the pink as hell or deep commitment to purple lucky shot, which could be only paintable for 24 hours, being the only two known painted ones. Another example is the painted pencil pusher, which was paintable for 4 months, leading to the creation of 30, all painted with different palettes. The lime painted one is currently asking to be bought for 30 keys. 
Some strange weapons have strange parts that shouldn't be applicable to them, with some being extremely obvious such as flamethrowers with underwater kills or big earners with long distance skills, with a majority of these impossible syringes being for tanks destroyed such as the flying guillotine or mantreads. Another, even stranger case for these stranges are those that don't actually track points or kills such as the six strange quick fixes or the strange human cannibals, which had a patch to fix the issue, but some still exist out there in the world, sitting in abandoned backpacks or in gift wrap. When paints were first introduced to TF2 and applied to a hat, it didn't actually add any additional text in the stats of it informing people that the paint was applied. You would simply have the normal text. There's an actual abundance of these types of hats, but searching for a seller or buyer is rather difficult due to the lack of legitimate information or tags to search for. Handed to trustworthy Telltale employees who worked on Poker Night at the Inventory, the Community Sparkle Vintage Luger Morph is currently the most expensive item from TF2, being currently listed for 3,160 keys. Many will claim that the golden frying pan will always be top dog, but what separates the two of them is that there will always be new pans. In fact, there are already 265 of them out there, but there's only 25 community sparkle vintage Luger Morphs, and no way to get more of them. Wow, what whiplash. Wondering about the weapon which needs the most wealth to this, whatever this is. The boiling point is a taunt that is nearly identical to the table tantrum, but instead of a pot of boiling water, there's a jewel sous vide cooker. Amazing. The only way to purchase the item was to buy your very own jewel sous vide cooker, and redeeming the code inside for $200. There are 340 genuine ones out there, and apparently 60 unusual versions of the taunt, which I didn't know about. Simple enough. The old leveling system within TF2 used to range from anywhere from level 0 to 100, until the Manconomy update changed it to 1 to 100. As a result, there are still some level 0 vintages out there. You could also throw in any odd level glitch in here as well, such as the level 5 Bills hat, of which there are only 4. Typically, they're supposed to be at level 10. The Nabbler is this god-ugly robot head that you would only get in Genuine as a reward for purchasing the free A-Toy's massive mechanical pyro multi-set for a measly $400, shipping not included. There are 31 genuine Nabblers in existence, and they sell for 180 keys. When the Manconomy update introduced the split between uniques and vintage items, there was a common glitch that resulted in certain items to disappear from one's backpack. As a result, a lot of people went to Steam support to try and get them back, resulting in some unique items to turn vintage. The most common is the Vintage Bills hat with 1,606 in existence, they sell for 55 keys. There's a scrapyard of vintage craft items such as craft tokens, scrap, and refine that sell for massive amounts of money. There are only 7 vintage earbuds and 8 Max's severed heads, both selling for 800 keys or $2,000 on the marketplace. The rarest vintage has to be the vintage shortstop, however, with only one in existence. With the price not being updated in several years, it probably rivals the gold pan and community Luger Morph. Back in 2013, players could receive a random limited edition holiday item by crafting the holiday badge with 10 other stickers. The items one could receive in terms of general rarity were the portable Smithsmith Spirit Dispenser, War on Smithsmith's Battle Hood, the Smithsmith's Caribou, and finally, Randolph the Bloodnosed Reindeer. So rare that there are only two of them in existence. Typically when a new update rolls out, there's an extremely brief period of time in which any new items have a super small chance of glitching out and being produced in the normal quality that's shared with stock weapons, even possibly being strange unique. Some examples are the 75 strange normal grenade launchers with one being sold for 350 keys right now, the strange normal Australian grenade launcher which there's only one in existence, the normal master's yellow belt rivals the price of the golden pans and the normal frying pan. For some reason, certain bugs and glitches allow the stock weapons to become craftable for a short period of time. They're fairly common and don't sell for too much, but what does sell for a lot is to craft something special for someone special. 
Technically, it wasn't crafted, but purchasing it caused it to glitch out, resulting in the two rings becoming crafted. Telltale employees and devs weren't just awarded Community Sparkle Lugamorphs, but also self-made big kills in Max's heads. What makes Max's head as amazing as getting away with the allegations is that Max's head was gift-wrapped at one point, allowing it to be traded and sold. And sold it was for $1,400. Pretty cheap in hindsight. Space Guy, didn't he go over impossible painted stuff twice now? Yeah, but listen, alright, the painted Vitasaw is just on another level of obscurity and oddness. Unlike the painted Calamangler, which actually had cosmetic changes applied to both it and its particle, the Vitasaw did not. It's rumored that only four exists, but there's only ever been one confirmed painted Muscled Man Brawn of all things. Unfortunately, the account it belonged to has been vac banned, with the owner of it moving away from TF2 so we'll never ever see this thing ever be traded ever again. The non-craftable Team Fortress 2 upgrade to premium is really weird. Talking about a bearded lady liking pineapple pizza ass weird. There are only two in existence. The game recognizes it as a map stamp, but shows it as just a plain blank white square with nothing else added to it. Who knows how they were made and what they're really meant to be. Obvious entry for anything, but I already made videos going over nearly each and every single unused cosmetic and weapon in the game's code, which I've linked in the description to, so I don't have to dwell on it here. The Valve Store shipment box was a one-time use action item similar to the Manco Store package that was able to be purchased on May 3rd of 2012, and only on that day. The item was then later removed completely from the game exactly a month later. Maybe. It's unknown if anyone actually ever bought the item, used it, or if the item is even truly removed from the game. What does it do? What's in it? Where was I on September 11th? Who knows? Rumors of old players' backpacks that haven't been active since the 2012 Pyromania update still contain the old equalizer within their backpacks before it was split with the escape plan. Other rumors also say that the original Valve employee who made the equalizer also has an unsplit version that isn't self-made or vintage. It gets even more confusing when you realize that the equalizer split was tested in the TF2 beta with the weapons of beta split equalizer 1 and 2, which were both tested on two separate occasions set a year apart from one another. There's an unused piece of code called Econ Holiday Restriction Halloween or Full Moon or Valentine's. We obviously have cosmetic restrictions for Scream Fortress cosmetics that are lifted during Full Moons or Halloween, but there are zero Valentine Day related cosmetics out there, with the exception of the special something for someone special. It's possible that maybe the rings themselves are only viewable on Valentine's Day, that Halloween cosmetics could be seen during Valentine's Day, or that Valve was planning to create more Valentine Day specific cosmetics. There are currently four completely unknown and unused item qualities within the game. One is simply known as completed and has no information but shares its color with the unusual. Similarly, the quality customized shares its coloration with the vintage quality. The final two qualities are rather bluntly named Rarity 2 and Rarity 3, which use a disgusting brown as their quality color. Not much else is known about them. Alright, hear me out on this one, because it's as doozy as an Anemiac with Vertigo chugging Triple X Moonshine on the Empire State Building. TF2 went free to play on June 23rd, 2011, alongside the day the Uber update was released. On this fateful day, two videos were released, Meet the Medic, and the TF2 is free to play announcement. A year prior to that event, however, Valve had hosted a special contest asking the people of Polycount to design and make their own item sets. There was such an immensely positive response that, although only five were originally chosen, Valve promised that more of these sets would be rolled out with future updates, and, lo and behold, the 2010 Australian Christmas update saw free new sets being added. The final update that pushed these sets was none other than the Uber update, introducing the final three sets from the contest, being the Lawrence of Australia, the number one fan, and the Airborne Armaments. Valve also introduced their own item sets for Medic, known as the Clinical Trial, on June 23rd, the same day TF2 released its free-to-play video and Meet the Medic. 
The Clinical Trial is a medic item set focused on heavily healing your teammates through the use of the Quick Fix, Solemn Vow, and the Overdose. As a nice little easter egg and teaser, it's the medigun medic uses in Meet the Medic instead of the stock one. But let's go back to the entries of the Polycount pack. One entry was for a medic set focused on heavy healing your teammates, called Heavy Duty Medicine by YM. It consisted of the Tonsil Guillotines, the Schwaben Charger 9000, and a primary known as the Overdose. Huh. You know, there's a chance that Val just saw the entry and thought they could do better. No harm, no foul of that. They even kept the name as Syringe Gun. But if we examine the footage of the TF2 Goes Free to Play announcement, we can see a medic run to heal a soldier on Barn Blitz with a very unique looking medigun. I'll admit that the quality of the image is pretty low, but it's still obvious that this isn't the stock medigun, nor the Chris Krieg, but the Schwaben Charger 9000 due to the hanging bits here and there. But what? Ugh. Okay, yeah, I get it. The f okay, no, you're not convinced. It's blurry. It could be anything. Well, how about later on in the video what, on Gorge when the medic just straight up has it? As is clearly there. The free-to-play footage isn't that old either. You can very clearly see other classes with weapons and hats that were released in the Uber update as well, such as the Demo Knight using the 1001 Demo Knight item set, the Spy using the Big Earner, or this Heavy using the Tommy Slog. There it is on the screen, but on the same day during Meet the Medic, it was just gone, fully replaced by the quick fix. So what the hell happened to the heavy duty medicine set? And that's the end of that extremely long explanation, hopefully expanding your intellect. I erased some things since they were just an earful and echoing some other entries, and by god does my jaw hurt. If there were some genuine, mind-blowing things I missed, feel free to comment them down below. Talking really mind-blowing stuff, not the small-time so-and-such, like the Battlescar Dragon Slayer Warpaints or Community Wiki Caps, the big boys. I felt like I did a pretty good job covering the ins and outs of a game that's been around for 15 years and with a gazillion items. Hey, some people don't even know about the Manco catalog, primarily because it's so hard to read or even search for what you want. We got the internet. Needing an Alamac about info needs to be done intelligently, Valve. Oh, I'm tired. I'm, I'm gonna go lie down now. <laughs>